So let me ask you a question. What constitutes an acceptable scientific theory? For example, how do we know general relativity is true or this space-time that Einstein spoke about is true? No one has ever seen space-time and much less observed this curvature by the masses the theory talks about. So how could we assume that it's actually true and have all our physics depend on this idea? Well, considering how science operates, this is actually not a very good question. And the question I'm talking about is, how do we know space-time exists? I would rather formulate the question to say, how does space-time exist? Meaning, in what way does space-time exist? And why do we think that? This is because science, and this is an important distinction, and it's very crucial, uh, science is not interested in basically absolute realities. That means when we do science, we are not trying to actually describe an objective, actual reality of the uh, physical world that we're dealing with. Instead, we are building models that have descriptive and predictive power based on our observation and data. That means when you come up with a scientific theory, then you are expected to provide a model that describes what we observe and also able to make predictions about future data. If I claim that I know how a planet moves and I actually understand it, then I should be able to use my understanding to tell you where exactly it's going to be in the sky in six months time. And if I do make the calculation and give you this prediction, after six months you can check if I was correct. And if I was, then we have a good reason to accept what I said at the beginning and we keep checking for other predictions that my theory makes. We used to think of space as flat. But Einstein came up with the revolutionary idea that space is actually made of this fabric-like type of material that bends and is distorted in the presence of masses. And also that the orbits of the planets are better described as objects following the closest thing to a straight path in a curve caused by the mass instead of affected by forces of attraction due to their masses, just like Newtonian gravity explained. So how do we know this is true, since like I said, no one observed space-time? Again, like I said earlier, once Einstein says that, there are predictions that come up with this proposition. That means we were able to say, if you were right about this, then phenomenon A should happen. And then we look for phenomenon A, and test if that's actually true. For example, if space is actually made of this bent fabric, then light should bend when it's moving close to masses because it's following that curved path. And this is actually what Eddington was able to prove and it's called gravitational lensing. There has been many different tests and they're still being done on general relativity and it's been vindicated time and time again. Another example and probably the first reason we decided to accept general relativity as a good model is the orbit of Mercury. If you use Newtonian gravity and you calculate the orbit of Mercury, it has a little problem that doesn't match the calculations exactly. The orbit itself changes orientation and it shifts and it's called the precision of the orbit. The calculation doesn't match that perfectly, but Einstein's new idea fit this behavior perfectly well. And like I said, this was one of the first vindications of general theory of relativity. So basically, space-time exists in exactly this way. Not objectively, but as a model that actually works and is useful for gravity and also the movement of astronomical objects. But where does the name come from? Why do we call it space-time? There's, there's this concept of, uh, I think the word is neologism, something like that. Uh, I'm not a native speaker, I'm sorry, but yeah, it's something like that. And it, basically what it is, is that we invent words and we coin new words to newly discovered concepts or things that we defined newly. For example, the word YouTuber, which we now all recognize as someone who creates content on the website YouTube, didn't exist before YouTube itself existed. Another one is Bitcoin. Before we came up with bits, I actually created the computer and defined what bits are and also invented the concept of a currency, we didn't have the word Bitcoin. We'd have to have those concepts first and then we can coin the term Bitcoin after we come up with this concept. 
The word space-time was coined to describe a mathematical construct. Again, space-time is not only Einstein's idea, it was actually a contribution of a few different people. It describes the fusion of the three elements of space, like classical space, but infused with time together as a fourth dimension. So every time you have this mathematical construct of the three dimensions of space with time as a fourth dimension, this is what's called space-time. So the short answer to this, how do we know space-time exists? Short answer is, we don't have to. We just need a model that actually works. Thank you so much guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Subscribe to the channel, like this video and share it for common law, knowledge and common good. And I will see you next time. Thank you.